it's kind of interesting. So much the, uh, what you were talking about on that last hole, it's almost like a snowball type thing. You know, when you know you're going to hit those short shots good, you tend to hit them good. And when you know you're going to hit those good if you need them, you tend to hit the approach shots better. Right. You're not worried about the short shot. If you know you're hitting your approach shots better, you tend to hit the tee ball better. And then vice versa, when you don't have any confidence, we'll try to fake it here. I was thinking about there because that first tee shot I remember feeling this yeah I tried really hard to stay through it all right so hitting a half wedge so give me the uh, thought process behind the half wedge well we're gonna... you know rather than this is kind of at the end of my 56 degree distance right so rather than try and muscle it and you know make some kind of mistake on my transition because that's where right. my mistakes are um, I've been processing, you know, a half, three-quarter wedge probably with the 52, just to make better contact and have a more reliable, just you know, dispersal right, right. Uh, pattern. Doesn't mean I'll do it, but but the contact. I knocked it in. Yeah, that would have been cool to have on video. Yeah. Great job. Went out and played before that clinic thing we did on Wednesday, a demonstration clinic. Right. I ran out and played nine. And it was really sloppy. I doubled one, bogeyed two, bogeyed two from 100 yards to the flag. I just flared a sandwich into a bad lie and, and then had a stretch of pars, but it was difficult. And we got to hole six, and we were playing the combos, so it's at the purples. And I said, I gotta fix this before we do the clinic. Because this is gonna be embarrassing if I'm hitting it like this doing demonstrations. Really? And um, so I told him, I'm gonna describe this shot like I'd describe it in, a, in the clinic setting. And so the flag was kind of over on the right side of six. And I said, okay, I wanna hit a cut in there. I'm not comfortable with a cut. So what do I have to do to hit a cut? Okay, I'm gonna aim about 10 feet left. And I had a spot on the ground. I'm like, oh, perfect. I got a spot right here that's 10 feet left of my target. All right, I got a double check ball position. Make sure the ball's in the right spot. Now I gotta sit down, I'm hitting a seven iron. All right, I'm not comfortable with a cut, but I'm gonna open the face slightly to my target line, but not all the way at the flag. And then I'm gonna squeeze a little harder and just turn through the ball and not even think about the green. And I set up and I hit it. And we all went, that's going in. And I'd hit balls all over the course up to that point. And it actually went through the flag. It just stuck right behind the hole. I thought, I don't think I set up properly, but when I described the whole setup and said it out loud, it was the first swing of the day that there was like nothing to it. I just went, eh, eh. It went right where I wanted. All the way up to that point, it was so much work to get it where I wanted. How often am I just handicapping myself? Because I just, eh, that's close enough. Cool. And then the question then is, so what do, how do I start the downswing? Yeah, you got it's, if you think with your arms or hands, it's not going to work, I don't think. That's right. So it's still got to be. The, I think it starts always from the ground up. Right. You know, feeling it from your feet through your knees, your hips turn, and then the body turns. Save it, maybe. No, just like just an all hand swing, you know, coming down. See, I always think of the swing as because my hands hold the club, so it's all hands and arms. I know. I got a stick in my hands. I'm gonna hit the ball with a stick. It's hard not to. Do you um, throw right-handed or left-handed? 